You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host, and we've switched it up a little bit for the fall. We have candidates for city councilor at large, city council, school committee, and mayor. And today I have a familiar face to most Brocktonians, Mr. Jacob Tagger. Welcome, Jacob. Good to see you. It's always good to see you, sir. You're out on the campaign trail. I see a lot of red, white, and blue out there on your new signs. Um, you're at it again. Are you glutton for punishment? I love it. Yeah, I love it. I, you having I, fun? I get, oh, I love it. And meeting residents, meeting you know business owners, and I get I have a wonderful team, so I'm, I'm having an opportunity to spend more time with with people who are like family to me. So this is a blast. I love it. Now, community activist over the years, coach, all sorts of different community activities. What do you think you have to bring to the table differently than the people that are there, and the other people that are running that are seeking the seat. There is a, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there are four seats, even though there are counselors that hold the seats presently, okay. but they're right now, Shana Barnes decided not to run for re-election, so there's a so-called open seat. Yes. And then there's three other candidates that are running for re-election, and then there's a total of eight. We didn't do a preliminary, we didn't have nine candidates, so don't whittle nine to eight. We get eight that go all the way to November. What do you have to offer? Um, as you know, you know I, I coached your son 20, 20 years ago mm -hmm. in Brockton as a young man myself. Um, you know, the city council, it's a team. And we have a, you know, a men and women on the city council who have different skill sets. Um, you know, we have people with public safety backgrounds, small business, um, lawyers on the city council. What we don't have is we don't have a Jacob Tagger, um, somebody who's been active in the community for decades. Um, I'm willing to put my my record as far as community involvement and fighting for the residents and for the kids in the city um, against anyone that's there. And that's not a disrespect to anybody who's sitting on the council right now, but I am 100% confident if um, the voters look at each candidate that is you know, either sitting in, in a seat currently or is a, a candidate you know going for the open seat, we don't have a Jacob Tagger um, on the city council that is out in the community every day um, trying to make Brockton a better place. Talk about a little bit work experience, your life experience. Um, I know about the community activist part. Yeah. Uh, work experience, what, what management skills or communication skills, or what do you think you bring to the table? I, since I graduated Brockton High, my first, first job out of Brockton High School um, was a program director uh, for Brockton Housing Authorities in two of the local housing developments because um, I've always been in a management position. I mean, I'm a leader, no matter what, what, what the role, is, what the job is um, or activity, but uh, management background, um, dealing with different personalities, hiring. Um, but, you know, first started out nonprofit, um, you know, went to the Boys and Girls Club after Brockton Housing Authorities, um, and I've been in retail, I want to say retail management as a trainer, um, as a general manager for the past, let's say, 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I know something that I definitely would bring to the table is I understand how to read a profit and loss report, um, how to cut back on certain um, expenses, uh, you know, overhead and things like that. So I know I bring a, a, that, that skill. So the management, um, which involves a lot of communication and dealing with different people, mm -hmm. um, and then also a, a business sense as far as looking at a budget. If you got elected, what would you do to communicate with the people? You're, you're a social media guy, all over Facebook, on the hub. What would you do to communicate with the residents and, and get it to be two-way? One thing I have learned is um, in, the, in the past two elections is, um, and I, I have to make sure I point this out, because you, you know, we have Brockton Community Access, something that I will, you know, I want to give credit where to do. Councilor, President Council, current Councilor um, Bob Sullivan, had a show, uh, was it the council? Before the council. Before the council. Before, so the stuff that's before the council. Before the council. I like right. it, you know, maybe we can come up with another name, catchy name, but I definitely would use, um, you know, community access, um, social media, of course. And then, like I said, with my activities in the community, I'm always around people in the city of Brockton. So on the ground, social media, mm -hmm. on Brockton community access, on the radio, you, you're not gonna have any council that's sitting there if I'm elected, that would be more active and more vocal in communication. I think it's important, especially with the access we have to communication nowadays. 
So that's what we're here for, Channel yeah. 12, the government channel, we've got the public channel, and we have an educational channel. So school committee on education, government on government, it's all one government, and then also public. Um, talk, let's talk a little bit about issues. Some of the, we get the issues that come up campaign after campaign, probably talk the power plant into the ground. It's yeah. not completely dead, but it's pretty much on life support at this point. Yeah, about the book. But there's a desal proposal that's sitting out there, a proposal the mayor would like to buy the desal plant. What do you think about that? Something, so as you know, I ran for, for mayor um, mm -hmm. against the current mayor, Mayor Carpenter, in last election. Something, I think there's breaches in the contract. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but I do have legal advisors um, who help me. And I do feel there's, you know, been a, there's been several breaches in the contract. I think, you know, I know the council withheld some money to Aquaria, but I don't think they really challenged it. Um, you know, we're paying for water right now we don't, we don't use just to have the access to it. Um, I mean, we all can agree, I'm pretty sure, all the current city councilors, the mayor, would, uh, yourself, I think it was a bad deal from the get-go. So we made a bad decision. Um, we needed a secondary water source, so we went with Aquaria instead of going with MWRA. Um, we need to, we, of course, we need a secondary source. Right. We need to get out of that contract with Aquaria, and I do feel there's several breaches that would allow us to get out of that contract. That is something I would, I've been consistent on. Last election, and I'm staying consistent. We could use that money, that six and a half million dollars a year, could be utilized towards something else. I know the council is looking into MWRA, and that's an option. I completely disagree mm -hmm. with the mayor, and I always want to be clear. I tell people that I, st I don't stand on the fence. Some of the candidates are going to stand on the fence and give you the political answer. I want to give you the truth, as how I see it. We need to get out of the contract. I don't think we should pay $78 million. We would have to take out a loan. I know we call it a bond, but it's a loan. So that's going to be over $100 million. Um, and then there are going to be infrastructure improvements to this facility. We don't even know how we're going to operate it. If it's going to be public, you know, if it's going to be city employees that are doing it. We don't know if it's going to be a private company that's going to run it. It's over $100 million. We either ride this contract out, get another source. Um, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it was a bad deal from the get-go. Um, but I, I would definitely push, if I get on a council, and again, I want it to be clear, I'm going to push to try to get out of that contract. I think it's worth it mm -hmm. to, to explore getting out of the contract. So what are you hearing when you're going out there? The signs, your signs are popping up, you're walking the streets, you've always you know, done the legwork to run for office. What are you hearing from the residents? What are, they, what are their issues this, this campaign cycle? And like you said, there's always certain issues that pop up during elections. It's always consistent. Public safety is always a big one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't have as many violent crimes last year as opposed to the year I ran for mayor. Um, but, you know, we have seen an uptick. Um, you know, again, one murder, one violent incident is too many. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, it's always public safety. My biggest concern, and I would hope it would be everybody in the city, is it's education. Mm -hmm. And I know you sit on a, a school committee um, for years. Education is our number one priority it, as far as I see it right now. Because it, if we don't educate our youth, if we don't have proper staffing in our schools, we're gonna, you know, that's gonna trickle down to public safety issues, homelessness. Mm -hmm. Education has to be the number one priority. So the city's talking about, still talking about lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Going back to from day one, we were the leader. Brockton was the leader. Brockton's the community that did ed reform. We had. Uh, Webby versus Board of Education, Hancock versus Board of Education, McDuffie versus Board of Education. I don't know who the lead plaintiff's going to be this time, but it looks like it's going to come to fruition. It's been talked about for a while, but it hasn't come to fruition. Do you think that's a good way to proceed, to, to get the funding formula in check? Um, I think it's a step. Mm -hmm. I do think, you know, speaking with people at the state level, um, I actually sit, I'm a co-chair of a hiring and recruitment task force with Brockton Public Schools, so I've actually gotten to see the other side um, you know, of the equation. There are some things I do think that we could do. Um, I'm still looking into them. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's been some discussion around you know, different health care programs for city employees that would save us money. Again, I'm still trying to learn about that. Um, you know, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a sports guy. You know, I coach youth. I think, um, you know, we definitely need, um, you know, sports programs for this um, youth. But right now the priority is teachers. 
and making sure we have adequate staffing for our students. So I would like to look at ways to maybe do a pay to play or, or try to get, um, I know we have a nonprofit anyways with the schools, maybe try to fund it that way. Right now we need to do whatever we can. And it's also, this is, you know, when I said earlier about looking at cost, how you can cut costs. I'm sure there's some things that we could cut to get even a few more teachers back because right now we're in such dire straits and the state is not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. So even if we take that legal action, it might take a couple years. Oh, yeah. It's going to get worse next year. We just hit, got hit for $16 million. It's not going to get better. And I think people need to understand that. And there might need to be some sacrifices that take place. I know our teachers union has foregone their, their raise for a couple years, so I, that's not what I'm talking about. But maybe there's some areas that we could, we could pull back on. Like I said, I've been you know, talking to the state people at state level about state GIC mm -hmm. health care. Um, and I do know that is an option that the city has looked at. The problem is, is you need courageous leaders because the, you know, there's always going to be resistance. People do not like change. We have to sacrifice, you know, what, do what's best for the city. Um, and you have to have leaders that are courageous to sit at the table and say, hey, listen, we need to do what's best for everybody. So um, not business as usual. It can't be business as usual. Okay. And honestly, and I'm not, this isn't directed towards anybody. Um, as a group, we need to be have collective courage. We need to, um, and not do things because it's an election year, because it's going to be an election year every other year. Do what's right for the people. You're a public servant. If you do what's right for the people, they will see you're doing what's right, even if they don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, and that's just how I would always be. Do what's right. You know, deal with the consequences from there. So before I forget, I got the three minute cue. I want to give you as much time as you want. Three minute, three cue, minute already, cue already. Sir? Believe it or not, because we can talk forever. Um, phone number, website, Facebook, so people can get in touch with you, be part of Team Tagger, help you out, and then pitch it right to the voters. Forget I'm here. Go look at the camera. So first and foremost, I have to say thank you to my team. Um, I have a great team of volunteers. It's like a, and we, you know, we the, we've come up with the hashtag Team Tagger. It's more like a family. I want to definitely say thank you to my team of volunteers who are working hard, keeping me in line and working hard for me. Um, also, of course, I need to say thank you to my wife and my children, because as Mr. Lindy knows, you need the support of your family, and I have the 100% support of my family um, to fight for the city we love. Um, if you want to find out more information about the campaign, if you want to volunteer, um, just get involved in Brockton politics or community events, um, you can go on our Facebook page is Jacob L. Taggart Jr. for Council at Large 2017. The website is www.teamtagger4, the number four, brockton.com. You can give me a phone call at 774-360-1137. And all I'm asking the, the voters in the city of Brockton is to look at the eight candidates. Um, I'm asking for one of four votes, one of four votes. But what I'm asking and urging you to do is do your research on the candidates. I am 100% confident that if you research the candidates, you will find that Jacob L. Taggart Jr. deserves one of those four votes. I will put my community service, my public service to Brockton um, against anyone's record. Um, if they have more service than I do, it's only because they've lived longer than me. Um, but I, pre I look for your support and thank you. Okay, and I just got the high sign, so we're, we're done. We'll have you back. We'll hopefully have a, a, a real live debate before November 7th. Maybe two. Who knows? Thanks Thank for you, being sir. here. Thank Appreciate you. it. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates on channels 9, 12, and 98 to cover the election season so you can be educated about the people that you will choose to represent you. Most of all, register and get out and vote. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.